Hello to everyone. Today I'll be sharing the topic on accent neutralization. So as I present my lecture, I want you to be cooperative because there will be activities later on. So in the study of accent neutralization, there are two important terms that we have to bear in mind. First is the intonation. So what is intonation? Intonation is the rising and falling voice in our speech, right? So as we speak, as if there is what we call this speech music, all right? Without intonation, we would sound monotonous. And that's not good in speaking because you will sound like a robot if that happens. And the other term is liaison or word connections. So in the English language, we do not speak word per word, right? But we connect the sounds in between the words. For example, we would not say the, the apple is ripe, but we would say the apple is ripe, right? We try to connect the sounds, the and apple, for example, there, there is the y sound in between the apple, right? So that's the y sound. Accent versus pronunciation. So what is accent and what is pronunciation? Some people interchange accent and pronunciation. Some other people would uh, say that it's uh, this, uh, it's the same. But there's actually, but they are actually two different things. When we say accent, it's the combination of intonation, pronunciation, and liaison. Okay, and yeah, that's this accent. And pronunciation is the way we produce sounds. All right, so accent. Pronunciation is just under the umbrella of accent, okay? So in pronunciation, it's the process of producing sounds using our articulators, just like our tongue, our teeth, our lower jaw, our palate, and so on and so forth. Perhaps this is a, a good question to, to address when we study accent neutralization. Is there a better accent? Could you share your um, uh, your opinion to that? Is there a better accent? Do you think American accent is better? Do you think British accent is better? Well, the truth is there is no better accent because all accents are accepted, are acceptable, okay? However, we have to neutralize our accent when we talk to a lot of people, when we talk to other people, especially when we use the English language. Why? Because we need to be understood by our listeners. Okay? Because if you sound like, you know, your regional accent, although you are using the English language, then you might not uh, be clear on what you are saying. So therefore, there might be a communication breakdown. So accent neutralization is very important. What are the factors that affect our pronunciation and intonation? I've mentioned that a while ago. It's actually first uh, first factor or the primary factor is our first language, okay, or the regional accent that we have, okay. So there is a theory in language learning in which language, it states that la our first language always affects our second language. And that is true if we were not able to meet yet or achieve yet uh, the mastery of our second language. That's the reason why sometimes we mispronounce words because of our regional accent. Okay? Yeah. So what is accent neutralization? Accent neutralization is the process of understanding subtle regional differences in the way a language is spoken and trimming the edges to make one speech sound more neutral. This is very, accent neutralization is very important in business, in education, in law, and in other um, related fields, okay? We know that people have different, like, people in the world have different accents. Could you just imagine if we talk and we use language how, uh, uh, while our regional accent was also in use, right? We might not be we, we might not understand each other. So for understanding and for uh, for communication's sake, we need to really neutralize our accent. 
and uh, just I, I would also want to share there's no again we'll go back to the question is there a better accent um another question to that is there really a standard accent so i, I attended a training before and they said that there's no standard english there's no standard accent okay especially now that we have world englishes okay so we have filipino english that's already acceptable japanese english chinese english so these are the varieties of english all right so why do we need to ritualize our accent i think i have answered that already as i presented the uh, first a few slides a while ago it's up to you to answer that question why do we need to neutralize our accent vowels and consonants consonant sounds and vowel sounds how many letters do we have in English I know you're counting we have how many letters we have 26 letters. How about our, the sounds of the English language? How many sounds do we have? Do we also have 26 sounds? We have 44 sounds. Okay, so if of these 44 sounds, we have 20 vowel sounds and 12, of these 20, we have 12 vowels and 8 diphthongs. Okay. So let's try to see and have some exercises in these lax vowels, okay? So in other books, they also say, or they also call it as um, short vowels, but technically it is lax vowels. So I want you to repeat after me as I produce the sound and as I read the examples, okay? I would like to remind you as well that if we pronounce the words and if we produce the sounds we have to enunciate it properly okay to enunciate it properly we have to open our mouth okay sometimes when we are practicing we can exaggerate the pronunciation right we can we have to make or we have to really open our mouth wide okay that's how we practice the sound of the english language all right so are you ready Okay, so let's start with the lax vowel sounds. First, we have the E. Could you repeat after me? E. Heat. Peak. Miss. Teep. We also have E. Eh. Again, E. Eh. Okay, let neck mess wet next we have ah ah sat ah sat back hat cap that's ah okay next is we have oh you say it again Oh, hot, oh, hot, sock, boss, top, ah. Oh. You also have ah, ah, cut, luck, fuss, cup. Next, ooh, ooh. Put, look, cook, good. The next sound is what we call the schwa sound. Schwa sound is always unstressed. So in the English language, um, most of sounds are actually um, schwa. All right. Okay. This is this sounds like a. Uh. Okay. Could you could you repeat after me? A. Uh. A, uh, a part, pilot, a uh, pilot, carrot, carrot, minute. It's not minute as we say it in Filipino. 
or, or I mean in the Filipino accent, but in uh, neutralized accent, it is minute, minute, uh, minute. Okay. We also have here the tense vowels. In other books, they say they call it as long vowel sounds, but in but technically it is tense vowels. Okay. First is we have e, e. Heat, peak, leak, peace, ah, ah, start, dark, glass, laugh, ah. Next. U, U, suit, through, room, juice. Next is O, O, caught, pork, horse, form, O. Next, uh, uh, hurt, hurt, work, nurse, sir. We also have here the diphthongs. How many diphthongs do we have? We have eight. First, we have I, I, light, like, rise, ripe. Next, A, late, lake, race. Train. Next, oi. Boy. Join. Choice. Noise. Ow. About. Found. House. Down. Or. Or. Note. Coke. Horse. Phone. Or. Ear. Ear. Hear. Near. Beer, fear, a, a, hair, sheer, peer, peer, chair, chair, ear. Next, oo, oo, tour, lure. Cure, pure. So those are the eight diphthongs, and those are the vowel sounds. We also have here the consonant sounds. First, we have p, p, pay, happy, cup, b, bay. Trouble, rub, t, teep, letter, letter, sat. I love a separate separate discussion about the t, especially the American t sound. D, deep, ladder, sad, k, k. That's k. 
no that's okay came talking back the sound is next is g game bigger bag we also have f sound again f like fine offer off v v vine saving off of rather of next we have the soft th the sound is so most filipinos mispronounce this sound so if you produce the sound your your tongue must be between your upper teeth and lower teeth all right so it will be like this and there must be an there must be air flowing out, flowing um or going out okay okay like thin that's the soft th thin method method both both the other one is the crispy th mm. to produce this sound your tongue must be must touch your upper teeth and then there must be a vibration you're going to touch here you can feel the vib uh, that there is a vibration mm. again mm. then other with S su missing face Z zoo crazy phase we also have sh sh show pushing pushing rush zh. we also have zh. could you say it again zh measure measure asia asia vision vision ch ch choke watching catch j j joke charging large well follow love mm male humor some mm nail funny mm that's mm single singer <sighs> this sounds like <sighs> okay it's like a sigh <sighs> right heal perhaps next er the, the sound er real correct Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You. Beyond. Next. W. We. Showing. Okay. So to practice the consonant and vowel sounds, we have different exercises. So I would just share to you what I actually do right so you can do this at home right like you would say e you exaggerate okay look at my face e ah e ah e ah you do that all right so that your jaw and your other articulators will be ex uh, will 
be exercised, right? And so it will be easier for you to um, to uh, produce the sounds of the English words or sounds of English language, okay? So those are the vowel sounds and consonant sounds. In the in accent neutralization, this plays a very significant role because you really need to uh, bear in mind how these how the, the word sounds, right? So that you can neutralize your accent. Next is we have intonation. Again, it's the rising and falling of your pitch. Okay, so it conveys intention, right? When you stress a certain word in your sentence or in your utterance. You, you try to, you, you make intention for that, okay? You make personal emotions such as surprise, anxiety, and excitement. Pitch is the number of vibrations per second. So that's why there's, this is also called speech music because there's actually a pitch when we speak, okay? Changes in pitch determine the tone of speech. Now let's try to look at these examples. First, I didn't say he stole the money. I didn't say he stole the money. Second, I didn't say he stole the money. I didn't say he stole the money. Third, I didn't say he stole the money. I didn't say he stole the money. Fourth, I didn't say he stole the money. I didn't say he stole the money. Fifth, I didn't say he stole the money. I didn't say he stole the money. Sixth, I didn't say I didn't say he stole the money. I didn't say he stole I didn't say he stole the money. Okay, the money, right? Seventh, I didn't say he stole the money. I didn't say he stole the money. Okay, the question is, um, are the meanings of these sentences the same or they have different meanings? What's your, th what's your thought about that? Do you think the meaning differs? Okay, let's see. So, the first one, I didn't say he stole the money. That means someone else did. Okay, because the emphasis is in the in the word I, right? I didn't say I didn't say he stole the money. So someone else did it. Alright? Someone else said that that he stole the money. The next one, I didn't say he stole the money. I didn't say, right? That's negation. So you are saying that that's not true at all. Because I didn't I didn't say that he stole the money. Third one, I didn't say he stole the money. I just suggested it, all right? I didn't say it, but I suggested that he stole the money. I might suggest I might have suggested it, right? Okay. Next, I did say he stole the money. So someone else did. Right? Someone else took the money. Someone else stole the money. Right? Because the emphasis in those the word in, in the pronoun he. Next, I did say he stole the money. So you are emphasizing that. He might have borrowed it, right? He didn't really steal it, right? He might have borrowed it. Next, I didn't say he stole the money, but rather some of other money. Not really the money that they're talking to, but some other money, right? And the last one, I didn't say he stole the money, right? Probably it's not the money that was uh, stolen, probably some jewelry. So meaning changes, okay, depending on what words we stress in our utterance or in our sentence so that's the power of intonation so it it has the power to determine your intention and your emotion as well when you speak okay all right so we have the statement intonation with now if we if you introduce a new information and a new information and it's the first time to utter this then you have to stress the nouns all right so we have these examples mike like bike mike likes bikes right mike mike likes mike like bikes mike likes bikes dogs eat bones ben writes articles nelly teaches french marvin loves music right so you 
stress the noun okay especially if you introduce new information and it's your first time to alter it so that's statement intonation with noun we also have statement intonation with pronouns what if you used already a pronoun right you have a pronoun of the nouns you've uttered for example dogs eat bones right the dogs and bones are now pronoun in here okay so the word that you're going to stress is the verb already okay so they eat them dogs eat bones they eat them all right angelica knows maverick angelica knows maverick she knows him okay the boys need some help the boys need some help they need something okay so that's how you do it statement intonation with pronouns statement versus question intonation see the examples below here's my car right you still stress it but the intonation in the in the last sound and the end sound is is uh, falling okay so here is my car here is my car okay here is my car in the question intonation where is my car where is my car right where is my car the other one here's my car here's my car where's my car spot the difference okay the statement versus question intonation emotional or rhetorical question intonation examples where's my car where's my car why is it gone so rhetorical questions use that as well we try to stress also the uh, the words okay Depending on the situation, a word may be stressed by any of the following reasons, all right? So, the, again, depending on the context. So, you have to consider also the context, okay? This is very important, okay? Analyzing this one is very important because, you know, we, we try to reflect on the saying that it's not what you say, it's how you say it, okay? Because based uh, meaning changes based on uh, how you say it, okay? Because... No, intonation plays a very vital role in meaning making, right? Okay, so new information. It sounds like rain, right? You're introducing a new information. So you have to stress the new information or the, in this case, it's the noun, right? It sounds like rain, new information. Opinion, okay? It sounds like rain, but it, I don't think it is. It sounds like rain, but I don't think it is, right? That's opinion. The other one, contrast. So if there is a contrasting idea or your sentences are contrasting, you have to um, stress also the contrasting words. For example, he likes rain, but he hates no. Likes and hates are opposite. So, you, so that's contrast. So you have to stress the words, okay? Can't. It, it can't rain. It can't rain when there's no clouds. Okay, it can't rain when there's no clouds, right? Now for negation, um, usually negations and contractions like can't, wouldn't, shouldn't, right? Negations, neg, uh, never, no, none, right? Don't in 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 contraction. So these are usually not uh, stressed. However, can't is the exception. Okay. You have to remember those uh, rules, okay? So you have to consider these things, all right? Your pronunciation, your um, your intonation in neutral uh, in in accent neutralization, all right? Now in the next video that I'll be sharing, I'll be talking about um, liaison, okay? Because that's part of the accent, okay? So and I'll be giving also tips on. Uh, how your on tips on how you're going to neutralize your accent including exercises that you can do at home okay all right so this is very important to speakers uh, in in um interview for example this is the first thing that an interviewer would notice if you have neutralized your accent or not okay so to get updated, these are these are my references. So to get updated with the latest video that I'll be making, don't forget to subscribe and hit the 
notification bell and please like as well the video that's it thank you so much and i hope that it helps you um it somehow helps you to neutralize your accent thank you and bye bye